Lynn, and uh, who was also AKA Warrior Girl. Um, Warrior Girl was one of um, Dream Circus. Dream Circus was myself, Brian Goggin, Tears and Naramore, uh, Felicity Perez, Harvest King, uh, Greg Thomas, and Melissa Margolis. And all of us were a part of this performance. Um, and it was before we were about to kind of create this circus troupe that um, would perform. Uh, this was kind of like where we were wetting our teeth as a collective with through Pepe's operas. And um, this goat uh, was the... Um, this goat was <laughs> like took, required a lot of time and energy. Um, they, just to like maintain, I think it would like really, it really re like took Kate's full time attention. Um, this is us covered in Playa. Uh, one of the things that's really powerful about Pepe's um, lingam is that it's, you know, it's a wire frame. It's a wire frame uh, with Playa clay that we would draw out of Trago Hot Ditch and then layer on top of the the chicken wire but it also became what we clothed ourselves in so there's there's uh layers of um of like this chalky clay on top of us and then um jason norelli basically covered each one of us every one of the performers in markings uh avarice had huge eyes um Gluttony had uh, a mouth on the belly. Um, Wrath had these, you know, like these lightning bolts. And uh, is that, is that you? that's me. I was I was in a state of being the high priest, um, and I was saying um, the greatest powers in the group. And then the the phrase that we would repeat over and over again was perfect timing. Everybody has it, and we did that chant over and over and over again. Did you write this? No. This is um, this was uh, the text again that I believe. Yeah, I believe that this is um, the writing of Pepe, and uh, the hermaphrodite Empress Zoe and her lasc lascivious behavior in the court has been revealed by Cardinal Petricelli. Again, he was doing. Um, a lot of investigation of the um, of Dante's Inferno. So most of the things that he was working with were all out of um, you know his um, interpretation of the of Dante's Inferno and the the high priest of hell possessed by desire at the sight of Empress So. Um, inciting the jealousy of the graces who assist him in the infinite recreation of fire. So this whole storyline um, was enacted in his, you know, in, in kind of like his, um, the most basic of uh, stage directions. And then those stage directions were given essentially to me um, and Tirza and, uh, you know, the nascent dream circus. And we uh, interpreted them, gave movement to all of the different groups. And then each of those choruses had a kind of, it was more, much, much more of a sentiment and a kind of state of mind than it was a choreography. Mm -hmm. There were small little patterns of actions or movements which you know have I've learned how to take all the way into creating, giving the actor a tremendous amount of uh, authority in terms of creating character. Like that's where I've taken my work over the years. But in its nascence, it was how do we get to a certain a particular state of mind, and then just let it go. And that was really where people were were going with in in each of these um, in in the state that people were working with. Is the ninth, ninth circle a reference to Dante? Right? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the hideous uh, Lilic to ascend in the hierarchy of the ninth circle, Satan embodied by a goat to please his wife. 
seemed amused by the events that the theater, the very balance of the universe. And, and you know, I mean, it's, it's the basically uh, just an excuse to get a goat out to the desert. <laughs> I guess the goat wouldn't go near the stage when it was on fire. No, not at all. And, and, and the, um, the, uh, the wife of the goat had to be constantly in connection. So Kate was, was uh, focused on that at a certain point, you know, so we would process, a large, a large function of, of the, um, you know, the way that we worked was we would process around the outside, um, the the inside of this of the of this circle. Um, there's Pepe. That's him. Do right there. No, right here. Oh, and oh, yeah. yeah. He's here watching it all go by. Um, and a lot of it was flocking in the sense of one person would do a movement in the front and then the entire group would kind of mirror and, and mimic their their energies. Um, do you know what these symbols are that on the uh, tor torturers? Have? Were they just made up symbols? I think he made them up. Yeah. yeah, I think if you can see in his earlier work, the, uh, the, the metal shapes that are on the outside of the... Um, Remember the the images of that that one piece that you really loved that we were gonna try and find. Oh yeah, right. It's basically just his metal work, you know. Um, Did was a mosquito part of the story? The well, that's greed. That's greed. Oh yes, yeah, mosquitoes, so, mosquitoes. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's oh there there are so many characters here, you know. Each one of these characters is such a, I mean, there, there are so many beautiful people that you know like some of them are dead some of them you know like the the particular storyline of these characters you know who participated in the operas and, and who you know we, we developed with there's gluttony and her crew um all moving you know here's the cockroaches and it was a it was a kind of processional around the circumference and we were performing to the audience outward but essentially using the journey to basically go deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. So she's there with her chorus. She's going deep into her gluttony character. And, you know, as you see 25 minutes later, she's still, you know, going deeper and deeper into it. Uh, Adana would eventually be um, Jason Norelli's baby mama. Uh, and the following year, her child is in the opera. Oh, the baby. Yeah, the baby. These are the hounds of hell. Is that what it was? What was the, the dog on the chain uh, supposed to signify? Well, the, the, the there were a lot of uh, kind of iconic images. The Minotaur pulling the chariot. Uh, the, you know, the, the wife, the wife of, of Satan and the high priest of Satan. Um, the, uh, the guy just happened to have a really huge dog, and they were like, "Can we use the dog?" Yes, we can use the dog. You know, he just came in, and they had they put him in a leather costume, and you know, it was just all spectacle, really. Um, and I think this one more than more than most was really just a series of archetypal images, and that was the incidental magic of the the queen and you know the and Satan. Or the, the high priest and the queen, you know, allowing him entrance to the stage. Where did the, the laughing voices and the yelling come from? Yeah, yeah it was just, um, this was the preamble. Uh, they were pre-recorded. The entire thing was pre-recorded. Uh, I believe this is the work of Peaky. And I can't, I can't remember any more about Peaky. I know that he still is around. He... Uh, would play. He he did the music, um, the pre-recorded music for this. Is is the the screaming supposed to be the souls? Oh of yeah. People as they descend oh, yeah. into hell. Souls. There she is, the the Russian ballerina. Um. And I, and I, I honestly, it's like. There wasn't um, there wasn't an initiation in this one. Uh, 
There actually there were, but they were much smaller at this stage. What we did was we developed um, these the wrath, avarice, sloth, and uh, lust, uh, envy, greed kind of characters, and then whoever came by, we would draw into the show. You know, so a lot of the people who are in those processions. Um, I'd say about half of them were people that we brought in, mm -hmm. and the other half were people that we found at, uh, that we brought in from before we were there, and then the other half were people we brought in from, from Burning Man itself. So tell me about the initiation rites in the camp while you're working on this show. Well, in this show, it was, it was a lot less involved. It was, we had, I think, two or three rehearsals around the, uh, the, um, the temple, and while those things, while those rehearsals were happening, which were mainly just about staging, um, there were people who would come in, and it was kind of incidental, uh, in the sense of we were developing the show. I wanted to be able to create this initiatory element so that we could bring people in to the show, and so because people would arrive and want to participate because that's what Burning Man was all about, um, we would bring them into the show. And, you know, there wasn't a very involved initiation for this, mm -hmm. except showing up in the cold and doing these kinds of maybe, you know, because again, in, in preparation, I kept cycling through and saying, okay, let's explore this and let's do this. And it was a repeat until there was a, there was a good uh, flavor you know, so it was it like needed massaging and it needed, you know, to be, um, you'd go to the different areas where, you know, he was painting avarice or he was painting greed or he was painting these different people. And I would work with each of the, each of the groups. And then there were team leaders in each of the groups and those team leaders would take over and, and work with the groups and just build them into a froth so that when we actually released into the parade, that there was something that was very alive and very real as it was going around. The, what are we seeing on the stage now? What, what is these are the the um, basically the graces of um, of hell. Um, there was it's really just like basically these characters that are um, representative of the hierarchy of hell, bringing. Uh, you know, the ritual of the high priest, mainly improv, um, you know, but, but very kind of like formula in the terms of like opening and creating uh, circles on the stage and uh, different, you know, quarters. And um, when there was, a, there was a big principle in this entire piece about call and response, one person moves, um, and then we had... Uh, Mainly the acts were what was going on on stage, and then the performers were continuing to explore. And, you know, we'd have different direction that would occur in real time. So right there, what we were, what we were looking at was there was an innocent, and the innocent was drawn through the entire show out here and she's this this is the innocent and each of the characters each of like this is lust addressing them and this is gluttony addressing her and then you know then there was that point of me drawing her forward you know so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you, if you caught that but here she is being addressed and then the um yeah I had already come in but but the character that I was playing was kind of the psychopomp that, that would come in, yeah, here. It finds her, brings her forth, and further into the into the the nine hells. Okay. So again, it's it's in its conception, in a circular sphere. While there's action on the stage, there's also action that's right up front, up against the audience. It was just Pepe's idea to do a circular procession around the stage. Or yeah, I think it arose out of all, you know, it arose out of rehearsal. I mean, we wanted to tell the story of lust, uh, of lust, uh, you know, wrath, avarice, sloth, pride, lust, envy, greed, um, out there while this ritual happened. I think that a lot of his focus was on how what was going to go on here 
at the center, and then he was basically gave it to us to play with what would go on on the outside. And so we created these choreographies. We created these. Nice. I like that choreography. But <clears throat> this is one of the this character here, is it? Yeah, that was. Uh, believe that that was like sloth. Oh, sloth. Yeah. And again, the, the focus was in choruses. So each person would take over um, for a period to tell their particular piece of the story. And I, my direction. What's going on here? Is that He's Stephens? calling Empress Zo. Yes, that's Stephanos. The beauty of this entire work is that there were phrases and things that were repeatable and repeated. And then there was really just a sense of emergent, emergent magic. What was going to happen was really like, people were just following the line. There was something to pass around that had, there was a liquid to pass around. You know, there was um, a sentiment of focus to him. Um, there was the outside circle, you know, and, and so it was like evolution until the chariot arrived, you know, where Empress Zo would would come in. So here, are the this is wrath. Different people would take over the front. The mosquito is great. Yes, the mosquito is great. Oh, suck it. Yeah. Yeah, sucking the blood. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I love the cockroach costumes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is all Annie's work. Fantastic. And now the, um, you know, there's all of the, all of the, firewood that's in these uh, in these side pieces um, the fire that's under the stage never really made a risk for the stage but as it burned it was definitely you could feel it lick the sides of the stage um, Yeah, ultimately, this is this is there's a there's a, there there are um, there's magnesium phosphorus being thrown down into the center um, to accent. Um, there was beat these characters individually having their experience. There were choruses of um, lust the, of wrath, avarice, sloth, lust, pride, envy, greed. Um, that had leaders. Each moment there would be a different leader and they would flock the movement and it was just to go deeper and go deeper and continue to go deeper. Did you choreograph that? Was that, was that your one? The choreography is kind of like, a lot of it was, here are, here are movements that will work for each of these characters. And then it was really uh, an open score and a ritual score in the sense of each individual gets the ability to have their journey or make their journey and then take others with them. So that structure is mine, but the actual choreography itself, you know, like that woman's work. So this is where Empress So enters. I love this part, this music. Yeah. And so everyone's been vamping and vamping and vamping and doing their experience and deepening and deepening and then she enters and the entire chorus surrounds the chariot that's being drawn by the Minotaur through the labyrinth in two. And um, certain characters, like this is one of the lust, one of the, one of the you know, uh, lust was always like right at the chariot because that was obviously a big part of what this show is about. Um, and I, again, I would say that there's something about this idea of ordeal, the ordeal, 
Um, these operas, each one of them in their own way, is a kind of ordeal ritual. It's like long hours of preparation, long hours of being in the cold, nearly naked, um, with a chorus of people near the fire. There's journeying deep into character. This is Pandora who died of an overdose. This is, you know, like these are these are like character people who um, are kind of like in these deeper journeys over hours and hours and hours of being in this thing collectively. And then um, there are station points where the music comes in and we bring her to the stage and then there's ritual performance on the stage you know where like choreographies on the stage where she you know has sex with the high priest and um is then you know carried down off the stage and then the stage is lit but ultimately it's really simple structure the the element of it that is ritual is that it's doing this over and over and over and finding new life in it you know all of this is finding life in this performance out in the middle of the of the desert with an intention to reach all the way out into the dark you know you know her, uh, her father was there Justin just incredible's father was there and videotaped the whole thing loved the show he was a he was an archaeologist crazy <laughs> Yeah, these the ones up front are lust. Um, that's sloth. Um, this is my moment of taking off her collar, <laughs> which was difficult. Yeah, but it turned into like a real, you know, like in t you know, it, it actually just added a tremendous amount to that moment of you know, actually having the intense contact with her and bringing her onto the stage. These were, these were much more about experiences than they were about performing. I mean, I think that that's one of the things that, to, to get really clear on what's happening here is like, you're creating a frame for people to have an experience around, more than you're creating a performance for witnessing. Was it, what was it? quite profound for the participants? Uh, were they deeply affected by their experiences? I believe so. I believe that people had, you know, like really, really deep journeys through repetition. Like there's a repetition of, I'm going deep into this element. I'm going really deep into this storyline. I'm telling a story in my action. And although it may, in a lot of ways, like performatively look like it's just a crazy mess. This guy who trailed that box after him the entire time has this deepening experience with the box, with the group, with the fire, you know, and you don't get a lot of experience doing that. In life, there's not a lot of that where we just get to like be in an archetype or an energy of lust, of greed, of anger and wrath and just continue to explore it and play with it and grow through it and have a cathartic experience. There's not like, the only place we get to do that is by sitting passively and watching other people's cathartic experiences on television. This is a full body experience that's out in the primal desert, you know, in a costume. <laughs> yeah, this was the first time it had been done. Uh, this was the first first big one. Yep. Uh, Pepe must have been excited. He must have Yeah, it's a proud father, you know, like a proud... Who got that shot? I wonder if that's the shot that we saw from the video. Yeah, probably. You know? Because I think, I think it is. This is the arrival of Empress Zone. Yep. She's been brought from the chariot down the Nine Hells 
through all of the uh, through all of and, uh, through all of the uh, all of the nine rings up onto the stage. She, the hermaphrodite, is called by the high priest. She's lamenting. She's, she's releasing. Resisting. Yeah, she's releasing her her resistance, and eventually uh, being called into a place of being dominated and then dominating. What's interesting to me right now is this feeling of like the follow through from the previous years of like male and female, like it's pretty archetypal. It's pretty like simple in its structure, but it's like male and female, uh, like in the, in the, in the desert site works here, it was like separation of man and woman, you know, these archetypal themes and like, obviously Burning Man is a place where sex is being explored on a massive level. You're in this free open space and you wanted to have these primal visions and, vi and images explored and played with, you know? And I think it's also, if you love to play with the perverse, he loved to um, give people a venue and an opportunity to see something on a huge, like something played out on a huge level that is like kind of an unconscious, an unconscious work, you know, something that's going on in the unconscious to be played out. You know, so the hells, the uh, the fertility rites of, of Babylon, the you know um, the cult the cult of, of fire with with the Indian mythology of Rudra, you know, drawing these things out and playing with them, you know, that was his real desire and design. The I believe that's uh, Julieta. It's his daughter. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's Julieta. And this is me starting to clear them from the stage. Basically saying, guys, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> when Stefanos told me he was singing, the stage is on fire, it's time to get off. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I thought that was so funny. And here's Lust in its full. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's this is the characters of Lust in their full expression on the chariot, just going for it. And again, this is not something you get to do every day. Yeah. This is probably not something that any one of those people had done ever again Fantastic. you know but it's like that given permission and given a venue and given a space to explore and go deep i think peppy had a had a genius for developing story vehicles that that did that exact thing and, and gave everyone a you know whatever level of involvement they wanted to to experience i think that, like, that was a genius here i really do well i you know it over the years, the idea of creating an open space instead of like a choreography of something that like, oh, this is how it's going to go and this is what it's about and this is what you're doing. Like, that's not interesting. What's interesting is a sense of here's an open space where there are some rules and there are some things that are happening and now explore. These are the Canadian? Uh, yes, this is the Vancouver troop. Wow, they were fantastic. Yes, they were. Did they make their masks? Too? Yep. Yeah. Do you remember the name of the group? I, I don't, but I can easily find it. I can easily find it. Unfortunate story of Pandora. She's a beautiful, beautiful woman who died of overdose a couple of years ago. It's like seeing God. some of these... Look at the stage. Yeah. God. Yeah. I mean, I, that is an innovation. That is a spectacular innovation in stage. And, uh, it just... Yeah, and you know, when you look at this, it's like, there, that's, that's deep, beautiful. 
beautiful performance ritual. It's like, however simple the structure, the ability to just journey in and to have such a such a beautiful stage to play around. And as you see, like spontaneous connection, spontaneous like story and relationship is established in every moment. Like there's different things going on. You know, I don't know if this is if, if this is an actual fight between two people that are like worried about staging, or if that's like actually two people going at it, like yelling at each other because they're in a transformative state. You know, this was me being completely taken apart and going for it, you know, in ritual, repetition, exploration. What is your face painting? Um, this was, bas it's basically, I'm, um, the high, like, uh, I'm the messenger of hell. It was, uh, a structure, uh, an image of, that I had seen in a, a, a John M. Muth comic book of just this, you know, uh, kind of vampire smile. This is the devil taking her back to hell, or taking her back? This is basically just the denouement. Explore, move through, give everything up, give it to the fire. You know, it's very much in the Burning Man aesthetic of like, send your prayers. You know, when you, when you think about the temple and what happened, you know, in the in the David Best temples and what all the temples that have happened since, that it's basically a place where you just send, send what you've got, send it away. You know, I don't know what she, she just threw, threw in there. She threw her crown. Her crown, yeah. And and you know, she's mentioned to me before, like that was her getting rid of her own self of self, you know, her own sense of self importance. You know, like these are the things that. And, and you think about the Native American Indian tradition of like Sundance, you just dance and dance and dance and it's a repetitive, it's a repetitive dance. It's something that just goes on and on and on because it's an offering that you're continuing to repeat over and over again. And I think that's a lot of what we were there to do. the audience reaction this is uh flash mm -hmm. you know flash flash always was uh papa satan at that time and so this was like father and son uh me playing with him what was the audience's reaction the audience was <laughs> yeah there you go you know they love fire Gave him all we could. Amazing. Boom. You show me another stage like that. <laughs> Hasn't existed since and had never existed before. You can hear the crack from the fire in a couple of these tracks. It must have been loud. Yeah, absolutely. Chris Cunningham did the music. Did, did you know him? Uh, I do. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think where. He's a, he's in London now. I just wondered if you knew him then. Yeah, I'm sure that we. I'm sure that we spent time together. I'm just not sure. Like I'm, you know, it's like many years since. So I'm trying to think about how where we were. To Brian Goggin, Al Honig, Morgan. That's like you know. That's basically the people who stayed with him all through the year, you know, all through all through the rest of his life. Um, Oliver would, would all, you know, would do many years. Pyrodisiacs, torch dancers. Oh, okay. uh, Werner. <laughs> the, we were referred to as the insects, so gluttony, envy, mosquito, greed. Wrath, pride. 
amazing Tony Perez, who is a really big Burning Man cat now, who you know helps to build uh, Burning Man. Misty, oh, Misty was amazing. Uh, Valentine, Pandora, and Amanda, Heidi Good, Unruly. Like these are all people who like I've known since like so much. Was Was Judy West in involved? Yeah. Did you see? Her? Did, you, did, did you know her? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she was a part of, she was a part of the crew. A part of the team. I mean, it was, again, a very tight team. <laughs> I love this. Bayshore Metals, the junkyard is one of the sponsors. Peppy's favorite junkyard. I think that's hilarious. Okay, terrific. Yeah, here now, let's see if I can do this without an act of Congress. Uh, it's that one. you got to hit the right one.